Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Python and welcome back to another episode here of Ark Survival Evolved coming at you from Lost Island. Thank you as always for all of the lovely support you guys have been showing me throughout this series and especially in the last episode. I truly do appreciate it. We reached well over 500 likes again, which is absolutely fantastic. Of course, if you guys want to continue supporting the series, the best and easiest way to do so is simply to drop a like. And of course, if you guys really want to go on further, go ahead and use code Python when ordering any sneak energy drink or at the time of this video being made to get 10% off when ordering any of my Apex gaming PCs. So I just want to say a huge thank you as well to all of you guys who were going ahead in the comments area in the last episode telling me what the Sinomacrops is capable of doing. As you guys can see, this is one of the things it can do. You can literally hold the space bar, if you're on PC that is, and the Sinomacrops basically allows you to fly, which is crazy. <laughs> So, in terms of going ahead and ranking up stats for the Sinoma, a lot of you guys were actually recommending that I rank up its stamina as well as its carry weight. So, as you can see, the stamina at the moment is just ticked over to just over a thousand, which is lovely. The carry weight, of course, is something that needs to be buffed a hell of a lot as well if we wanted to use it as a backpack as well. But, in addition to flying, we can go ahead and press the C button, which would be crouch. And look at it! Look at this! This is fantastic! You can glide with the Sinoma as well! This is so cool though, dude! <laughs> this dino is ridiculously useful! Like, really it is. You can go ahead, hold R as well. You can enable auto scream. Apparently, according to you guys, it will go ahead and scare away a whole bunch of the smaller dinos, which is absolutely ridiculous. So we got ourselves a little bit of a group here. Let's go ahead and give this thing a go. Scream! Yeah, you better run there, son! Yeah! All right. Is there like an easy way of making it so that the Sinoma just sort of flies off your shoulder? Enable auto scream requires aggro. Huh. So if I aggro the creature, then it will start to scream and scare it away. Wow. You guys might be onto something saying that it's epic in caves. I haven't even found a single cave on this map so far. So I don't know. That's something I think we need to change at some point. So perhaps what we need to do is change its behavior. So we've got stance, attack target. We've got passively, definitely not neutral. Possibly could be one we're looking for. Attack my target or aggressive. If it's aggressive, it will literally go for everything in a cave, right? I mean, a whole bunch of buggies, Aranios and Arthros, I imagine it'll go for as well. I don't know, man. I really do want to see just how effective this guy is against buggies. I think it'll be a super fun thing to find out because at the end of the day, I've never ever tamed this diner before and I'm interested to see just how effective it is. Anyway, the first thing I want to do in today's episode, aside from, you know, trying out this Sinoma's various bits and bobs it can do, is I want to go ahead and make the chainsaw. I now can. We've got the cementing paste, electronics, metal ingots, and polymer required for it and I want to go ahead and birth a couple of tech parasols into the world kill them when they're adults and then see just how effective the chainsaw is at getting a ton of materials because yeah if we could get ourselves more and more metal I think we'll be on to a winner here ladies and gentlemen oh okay so you literally just use it and then it automatically fuels it from the gasoline in your inventory Okay, interesting. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, take a couple of tech parasol eggs out of here. As you can see, it's entirely full, and that is why these guys are no longer doing anything. Uh, so, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, light the fire. Uh, let's see what we can get going here. Hey, guys, random side note. Check it out. This one seems to have a color mutation here because, you know, he's got a red head. That one's got a silver head. This one appears to have a pinky purple head or fuchsia, I think the color might be. And if we go into the ancestors thing here, it does indeed say that there's a mutation here, which is pretty darn interesting. All right, what about this one? No mutations on this one. I didn't imagine so. But is this one literally just a color mutation? So if the mutations add levels from the base level, which of course 35, 35, this one's 39. So yeah, it's got more levels, man. 
Anyway, I guess as we go along and we get ourselves some more breeding pairs, we can start experimenting a little bit more with mutations a little bit later in the series. But uh, yeah, it's certainly interesting for now to see that we do have a little uh, parasaur mutation here. All right, so we're going to keep hitting them both. Okay, so they're now both dead. So now what I do is I take the chainsaw and start going to town. Ah! Uh. Wow. <laughs> wow! Thank you so much to all of you guys who were suggesting we get ourselves a chainsaw. Holy crap, man! From two tag parasols, we got over 600 metal. Just... <laughs> wow! Just wow, man! See? Who says I don't go ahead and read the comments area of my videos, huh? <laughs> Oh, dudes, I really appreciate you guys for going ahead and let me know about that one. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So I guess that means we have a whopping great source of metal once again. So we can start going towards our industrial forge goal. As you can see here, we are approaching the halfway point in terms of the metal requirement. And now that we have an amazing way of getting metal from tech power source, like... This is, this is just fantastic. It literally is just a waiting game at this point, let's be honest. Alrighty, folks. So, the next load of comments I was going ahead and reading was about the Quetzal taming. Some of you guys were saying that there's like a, a, a net or a net projectile which requires the harpoon launcher, which, I'll be honest with you, I don't think I've ever actually crafted the harpoon launcher before. I don't think I've ever used it. So, this should be... A pretty interesting one. So let's go ahead and check it out here. The Harpoon Launcher. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, so there's a fair amount of requirements for it. But I do believe we've actually got everything we need for it. And there we are, ladies and gentlemen. All of the resources needed for the Harpoon Launcher. 60 cementing paste, 60 fiber, 25 hide, 120 metal ingots, 50 obsidian, 30 polymer, 40 wood. Holy crappers. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff, isn't it? That is a lot of stuff. All right, so can we make the net projectile here? No, we cannot. Where do we make the net projectile? Oh, it's right here. Oh, okay. Well, that seems pretty simple, doesn't it? We just got to have a little bit of metal on us, a little bit of fiber, a little bit of polymer on us, and we're just about there. There we are, ladies and gentlemen, the net projectiles. We're going to get five of them for now. I don't actually know just how effective they are, if at all. But if you guys are right, and they allow us to temporarily incapacitate a Quetzal in that it can't move anymore, then uh, yeah, this will be more than worth it. Oh, snappers. All right, so what we need to try and do, ideally then, is we need to try to find a Quetzal that is ideally above a beach because let's be honest those are mostly the safest areas on this map in terms of not having too many hostiles around so what do you guys think huh remember that tech quetzal we found at the beginning of the last episode could it be time could it be time that is the question isn't it <laughs> i'm excited but i'm also very nervous at the same time so Let's take our griffin here after ranking up its melee damage a little bit. And uh, we are going to attempt this thing. So there is the tech quetzal right there. But at this particular moment, it's in a very, very bad place. Because there is, in fact, an alpha raptor just down there. And I don't feel like... Oh, it's just it's just gone out of view. Ah, darn it. Do you know what? I'm actually kind of tempted to uh, continue hunting. Maybe we find ourselves a Quetzal in a slightly better location. Ideally, I'd like it to be around these islands here. Because that, in my opinion, is probably going to be the safest location in which to take a Quetzal down to the ground. Oh! It's a, it's a freaking 140! Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We've got to do something here. Uh, yeah! Darn it! It's really... Re wait. Oh, I thought... Wait, is it above the... I can't tell if it's above the freaking thing now. Uh, oh, no. It's got above... Oh, it's got above the water. Okay. Well, maybe I can attempt to take it down on this island in front of me instead. However, floating above the island where I just spotted it is also a good way to go. All right. What do you guys think, eh? Uh, yeah! Yes. Yes. Down you go. I can't tell where I am anymore, if I'm honest. Okay, okay, here we go. Boom. 619. 
That is crazy. Oh my god. I actually can't believe this is working. <laughs> I can't believe this is working, dude. This is fantastic. Once again, thank you guys so much for all of your lovely freaking comments and tips and suggestions regarding this series and what I'm doing in it so far. I truly truly appreciate it. I really, really do. I guess the only thing is I can't really tell at what point this guy is actually knocked out. I mean, we've simply immobilized it at the minute, but uh, I would imagine, I mean, does hitting it in the head do any extra... Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Please tell me it's not about to go down. Please don't go down, buddy. Okay. Right. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. I will allow you. Come on, buddy. No. No, no, no. You can't do this to me again. Oh, boy. This isn't very good, guys. I haven't shot an arrow into that Quetzal for a while either. Like, a while, while. I mean, it's almost certainly like its oxygen is going down. It's going to be a matter of time before things go really, really badly. Should we try and quickly get ourselves Stimberries and see if that works? I don't know, man. I mean, at this point, I'm just going to try anything. It's as simple as that. I need to try just about anything to try and get that Quetzal out of the gosh darn water. And they're nomming on it. Like, they, I don't have any effective weapons. Not really. Ugh. Oh, this is just a load of crap. Well, I mean, the Megalodon is indeed out. I wasn't actually expecting that to be a thing. But uh, anyways. Oh, God. All right. Boom. Reduce the torpidity. Do it. Come on. Be quick about it. Do it. It's not really going. What? Nope, it's dead. Ah, crap. That's really unfortunate. That was just unfortunate. It really was. It just went down over the ocean again. Gosh darn it. I'm not having this be another entire Quetz taming episode, all right? It's not happening. The second one we're going for is going to be the one, all right? Oh, well, for now, though, let's go ahead and check out our levels up here. We have ourselves two, so let's see about ranking up. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe we start ranking up our fortitude just a little bit more. A little bit more environmental protection, I feel like, would be a good thing to have. But anyways, here we are. We've got ourselves a rocket launcher uh, and night vis goggles. Eh, I mean, to be honest, once again, I'm kind of tempted to actually just save up. So, yeah, in terms of the method for taming Quetzals, yeah, you guys were absolutely right. Harpoon launcher, net projectile. I will definitely have to remember that when it comes to any future island series I wind up doing, you know. I do want to do another series on the island because I love that map. I really do. And I'd like to actually be able to complete a series on the island. And now that I know about the harpoon launcher and the net projectile, I'm hoping that I'll be able to get some good stuff going on the island with a Quetzal. I hope so anyway. But then again, with that said, we don't have griffins on the island and I'm not entirely sure whether you are able to unlock the net projectile on the island. I don't know. I've got a feeling you can't. Maybe there's like a mod out there that allows me to craft like everything from every map on any map you want. But uh, yeah, I don't know. So let's craft ourselves up some more Trank Arrows and we will get right back on with this thing. Check it out as well, ladies and gentlemen. Again, periodically be making all these friggin' narcotics and check it out. <laughs> We've got so many at this point. This is ridiculous. Imagine the amount of shocking tranquilizer darts and or just regular tranquilizer darts we'll be able to make with all this. This is crazy, man. Oh, and what do you know? Yet another level up. Fan friggin' tastic. Level 88. The cryo fridge. There it is, guys. Hey, all right. Uh, we can craft it at a supply crate. Okay, so we need to go through a loot beam with a bunch of resources in order to make the fridge. I wonder if they function like an ender chest from Minecraft as well. Like, if I was to put a bunch of cryopods in one fridge, if I go to a fridge elsewhere on the map, Will the same cryopods be in there? If so, that would be fantastic. We can make one at this base and one at our new base location. And then we would just have our dinos no matter where we are. Oh, you beauty. What level are you? Come on, buddy. Be a good one. 156. Yes. Yes. This seems to be a kind of decent area as well. This could be one to go for. Hiya. 
All right, now we go all the way down to wherever it landed, which is right on in here. There we are. Okay, come on, come on, come on. We were wasting time here. Boom. Damn it! Missing is not going to help. Let's just keep on going here. I mean, to get a level 156 tech Quetzal would be marvelous. I mean, look at the colors of it as well. Very pink and green, isn't it? <laughs> I don't care that I'm shooting it maybe a little bit too often. I just want to do maximized torpor. Well, maximized rate of torpor, shall we say. So, oh, what was that? Never mind. I thought that was, uh, I thought that was a raptor or something along those lines. Still going well. I just don't know where the head is. Oh! Okay. Uh, where's my dude? There he is, there he is, there he is, there he is, there he is. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Before he leads me into hostile territory. That's it, that's it, that's it. Ideally before he gets into the ocean as well. That missed? Is he above the ocean now? I can't tell. I can't tell. Oh my god. Okay, right. We need to take it down one more time. Need to take it down one more time. And then we might just about have this. That's it. That's it. Change direction. So you go above that island there. Fantastic. Yeah. Now I can see the head. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. We keep on shooting the head. It's out. Yeah. Dude. We've actually got it. We've actually got it, and it's in a reasonably safe location. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> We've actually got it. Oh, I'm chuffed. I'm absolutely chuffed to freaking bits. I'm absolutely chuffed. Oh, we have had so many troubles with trying to tame a freaking Quetzal in this series. But here we are. Hey. Eh? Here we freaking are. Needless to say, I think going ahead and using prime meat might be the way to go. But to be honest, I don't think I really want to be venturing too far away from this guy. So yeah, we're just going to wait around here, ladies and gentlemen, and see about getting this guy tamed up. It's going to be a fantastic time, and it's going to eat a little bit of meat there. Oh, that's going to take a while, isn't it? All right, at least 10 more bits of raw meat needed. Could it be possible... We might actually need to get some narcotics for this guy. Hey, that's the real question. Right, let me try and think about this. What is the easiest source of raw prime meat? I mean, pretty much anything big, really, isn't it? I don't know. Maybe we try to get ourselves back to base, pick up some narcotics just in case. I don't particularly want to be going ahead and shooting the Quetzal because that'll reduce its taming effect of this, right? So we head back to base. Get some narcotics, okay. Optionally, if we do find ourselves a large dino that we could kill for a couple bits of prime meat, perhaps, then we could do that as well. But uh, yeah, I think we've got this one in the bag. Don't let me regret saying that, okay? Like, really, Ark, please, just, just let me have this one. Please? And uh, yeah, that Megalodon I went ahead and knocked out earlier. I really don't care about it. I'm not actually in the mood to do any scuba stuffs right now. We'll probably come back to that at a later point. And additionally, I don't think it was a very high level either. So that means I care about it even less. So as much as I wasted a little bit of a Trancaro supply on it, I don't care. I just don't care. Oh, a Paraser. Those guys give prime meat, don't they? I certainly hope so because I am about to go ahead and pummel it into the ground. Yes, yes. Yes. Try it, son. Try it. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Come on. Try me. Yeah. Bullseye. That's exactly what we're looking for. All right. Back to the Quetzal. There it is. He's still down there, ladies and gents. All right. So all we need to do is get ourselves on the floor here. Doesn't appear to be any hostiles nearby, which is great. Uh, let's grab ourselves a few bits of prime meat here. And we shall get right on with upgrading the taming of this guy. All right, so let's get these off. Let's get these on. And yeah, should be way quicker now, ladies and gentlemen. And looks like it's still got a good amount of its unconscious bar right there. So actually, I don't think we need any narcotics at all. If the unconscious bar was less than that of the taming bar right now, then yeah, I would 100% have to use uh, some narcotics on it. But actually, we're totally fine. Uh... Little Dodo, it's not your mother. You need to go away. Wait, is it? The Dodo is inside the... Yeah, all right, all right, Ark. Yeah, uh, apparently Dodos can no-clip into Quetzals. I mean, what is this, man? This is weird stuff going on. <laughs> You're a 
strange dodo, aren't you? All right, in other news, I don't know if you guys saw, but we got about 25% of the taming bar with one piece of the raw prime meat here. So way more effective, needless to say. And uh, yeah, maybe two more bits of prime meat and we will have a level 220 plus tech quetzal. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. <laughs> If you guys haven't dropped a like already, holy mother, dude. Level 233. Probably the second highest level dino tame I've had so far this series. The first one, of course, being that tech raptor we got in the last episode. Let's check out this guy's stats. Wow! 8,500 health, 2,400 stamina. 1400 carry weight, near 400% melee damage, and 136% movement speed. Wow, just, just wow. Wow doesn't even cover it, dude. That's a crazy amount of stamina. I've never seen a dino with that amount of stamina before. That is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, this is great. If you can't tell already, I'm pretty damn chuffed about the fact we finally got a Quetzal. And it's a bloody good Quetzal as well. <laughs> so do you know what I feel like doing for the rest of today's episode? I feel like we should take our Rex to the desert and we go on a hell of a dino killing spree. I mean, what better way of gaining XP for both your dino and your player than to go ahead and go on a bit of a killing spree. I must admit, though, I am kind of tempted to make myself a Quetz saddle, just a regular Quetz saddle, and see what kind of damage this guy can do. And more to the point, see if it's an effective killing machine. Because if it is, then it might be an idea to use this guy instead of the Rex. I don't know, dude. Maybe we try the Quetzal first, and then failing that, if it doesn't do a lot of damage, then we'll go for the Rex instead and rank up the Rex a turn. I mean, just look at it, ladies and gentlemen. A beautiful dino Indeed. <laughs> ah, Silica Pearls is something we do not have so far in our world. I don't even know where the devil you find it, to be honest. I have no idea. I mean, usually you get Silica Pearls from those little clams that are underwater. The easiest way I can think of is to kill the Trillobites, but we tried that before and we couldn't find a single freaking one. So, where oh where? Can we get silica pearls from? All right, real quick, I'm actually going to make myself a GPS because I'm looking at the Ark Lost Island Explorer map to the left of me on the wiki here. And uh, it's actually saying that there is a silica deposit not too far from my base here. Oh, I think I found some guys. All right, I've got to be quick about this though. Oh no, I'm so slow. I'm so slow. Huh. Oh. 184 silica pearls. Oh, dude, this is going to be such a pain in the butt process. But we found some freaking silica deposits. Fantastic. There we are. Rather like that. Ha! There we are. Ha! There we go. Yeah! So there we are. A successful resource gathering trip just for once. We actually managed to find all the things we were looking for, which is wonderful. And now all we got to do is get home and make that quet saddle. 85 silica pearls required. And we've got like way more than 1,500 of the darn things. <laughs> Always better to be overprepared than underprepared. Remind me just how effective are sickles at getting fiber? Um, yeah, okay. Very, very effective indeed. <laughs> Whoa! Tech Quetzal has a level up already. Oh, you are a slow fella, aren't you? Wow, okay. So about 400 health added for each level up, which is great. I'm pretty happy with that. I can't wait to rank this guy up a whole bunch because, yeah, we'll get a bunch of health, a bunch of stamina, a bunch of weight, a bunch of melee damage, and a bunch of movement speed. Honestly, it's just about everything I wanted to rank up with this guy. Do you know what, though? I just came up with a way quicker way of getting the Quetzal to its destination. If we take a way faster flyer, for example the Maywing over to the desert and then simply on Cryopod the Tech Quetzal and then Cryopod the Maywing. Makes sense, doesn't it? Into the Pokeball you go there, Mr. Tech Quetzal. And then we will take oh, the Maywing or the Griffin. Maywing or Griffin? Griffin's got 6,000 health. The Maywing's got 3,000 health. Eh, let's go for the Griffin. Solid. Oh, uh, shouldn't forget the Quetzal's food, huh? 
that will be a good idea. All right, there we are. Thank you very much. All right, let's actually go this time. Hey, well, that's not very nice now, is it, you stupid little raptor? Hey, no, you're just a regular raptor. You suck. You suck. If you were an alpha raptor, I might have been a bit more scared. But no, no. Not at all, son. Not at all. Alrighty, so into the Pokeball you go there, Griffin. And then we are going to see what the Tech Quetzal is capable of. Two levels up for the Tech Quetzal already. Oh, you love to see it. All right, well, let's make sure there's always a ton of meat on this guy. I think we'll just go for 10,000 health and then we'll start ranking up other stats, all right? All right, here we are. In the desert, we're going to see just how much power the Quetzal has behind it. And then after that, we'll probably wind up wrapping up the episode. But as episodes go, this has been a mighty successful one. Yeah, there was one little sort of hiccup, but we got through the finish, didn't we? Eh? All right, 87 damage seems kind of all right. Well, there's another level up. There's 10,000 health. All right, very cool. Right, now we can start ranking up other things with this guy. Oh, you want to go stupid Arthro? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Why don't you just suck it? <laughs> stamina. Wow, okay, so you get 120 stamina for every level up. That's pretty decent. Yeah. We can absolutely riggedy riggedy wreck all of the little sneaky dudes, my fellow Python brethren. <laughs> all right, uh, melee damage. Adds, what, about 15% melee damage percent onto it, which doesn't seem that bad, actually. So, yeah, guys, let's just go ahead and kill a bunch of dudes here. See what happens. Say hey there, little vultures. Yeah. Wrecked. Oh, it is the vultures that give you all the spoiled meat. Yeah. Very nice. So, if you're wanting spoiled meat, vultures are the way to go. Hey there, fellow Pythonators. Do you want to die there, sir? Oh, I think you do. Look at that. 94 damage is now the amount we're doing towards these fellas. Ha <laughs> ha. Love to see it. Absolutely love to see it. Ruining these poor saps. Ha. All right. Another level up. Oh, two levels up, in fact. Uh, all right. Increasing weight goes, what, about 70 per time? Decent, man. Decent. Hey, Budski. 94 damage. Very cool. Oh, wow. What? You think your poison is really going to be an effective means of stopping me? You what a dummy. Go on. You might as well just accept it. There you go. 137 chitin. Coolio. Bye, Arthro. What a dummy you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Quetzal is just absolutely ruining everything in existence. You know what I think we should go for just to finish off today's episode, though? Maybe some mantises? Maybe a little bit of organic polymer? Maybe what we could do is use this on them and see if we get even more organic polymer. Here we are, guys. We have not one, not two, but three mantises. We shall see uh, what this guy is capable of doing. Oh, my goodness me. There's a small sea war going on here. And guess what? Your boy's about to swoop in. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. Come on. At least try. All right. So we managed to get that one. So if I was to go ahead and use the chainsaw. Ah, crap. I don't know what that was, if I'm being honest. But hey, ho. Anyways, another level up. Let's go for more melee. Because why not? All right. Another small group of mantises over here. We'll take them down and we shall see if we can get an increased yield of organic polymer. Okay. Let's see what we can do. Come on then, fellas. Come on. Yeah, 100 damage, huh? 100 damage. That oh, one's already out the game. Okay, come on. I ideally, okay, there's a level 90 out the game. Oh, come on. All right, let's see what happens. So that Mantis pretty much like instantly got wrecked. I think that the chainsaw is not the way to go. Uh, all right, lesson learned. I think we need to stick with the hatchet, and that'll be the best way of getting organic polymer from those mantises. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so with a pretty significant amount of organic polymer and various other resources we've got going on, I think it's time to end off today's episode. I mean, all in all, it has been a banger of an episode. I'm sure you guys would agree. We finally got a Quetzal. That arc of the arc series is over. We finally got one. I'm super happy about it, and uh, hopefully you guys are excited for more episodes to come. Please do be sure, of course, to drop a like if you haven't already, if you do want to support the series, and hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future episodes here. But for now, my friends, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate all of your support, hints, tips, suggestions. They really do mean the world to me, and it really does help out the series, my friends. They truly do. So, 
Thank you for that. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.